people rejoice in him welcome good morning first fruit community church all our brothers and sisters in christ all our welcoming visitors we bless you in jesus name as we come into the presence to worship to magnify to adore him to lift him up because he is lord he is king of kings he is the great i am he is almighty all sovereign all powerful all excellent all wonderful he is alpha he is omega he is the beginning and he is the end and we thank you thank you jehovah jireh for being our provider thank you jehovah shalom for being our prince of peace we thank you hallelujah 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 it's say oh taste and see that the lord is good blessed is the man who trusted in him and lord we trust in you hallelujah because without you we can't do nothing you are our good shepherd and we thank you for leading us we thank you for guiding us we thank you for covering us you are our deliverer our restorer our redeemer you are our great chief and commander and we thank you hallelujah we thank you for keeping us this week hallelujah we thank you for waking us up this morning hallelujah we welcome you holy spirit we welcome you angels we help welcome you ministering angels comforting angels healing angels hallelujah minister to god's people on today hallelujah have your way in this sanctuary hallelujah have your way in our hearts hallelujah creating us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us hallelujah oh we magnify you we worship you thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus if it was not for the lord on our side where would we be on today hallelujah for the lost and confused for the broken hallelujah we pray for deliverance in the body of believers we pray for revival in our souls hallelujah <laughs> revival 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 in our nations in our country we pray for you to do a new thing hallelujah hallelujah forgive us of our sins on today save someone from today rescue someone on today minister to a broken heart on today release the power of the holy spirit on today as you use our men of god our pastor our shepherd of this church hallelujah i pray that you give him a word a word for someone who might be suffering a word for someone who might be wrestling a, a word for someone who is confused father purge us on today hallelujah cleanse us hallelujah detox us hallelujah and refill us on today hallelujah supply resources hallelujah lord jesus grace us with your favor and your blessings hallelujah lord jesus you are the ruler of the universe hallelujah there's nothing impossible for you hallelujah we pray that you work out a situation today resolution for a problem today it is an option to quit it's not an option to give up but it's an option to be rescued jesus rescue our family on today unite families on today hallelujah we lift up our young people 
give them dreams and visions. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray for our first family on today. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we pray for them that you continue to pour your love and kindness, mercy, compassion. Draw close to them, Lord God, as they continue to celebrate Deacon Johnson. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. Let it be a life. Let it be a life of example. Lord, he's a worshiper and we worship you in spirit and in truth. So, Father, bless the praise team as they come. Pray for the musician on today. We lift up our first lady on today. We lift up Mother Geneva for the first family on today. Minister to them. Hallelujah. Lord God, we need you. And we can't do nothing without you. Revival in Jesus' name. And let everybody say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's continue to worship. Hallelujah. Let's welcome the King of Kings. Let's welcome the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and begin to worship Him. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. I said, you're worthy, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on into this place, Jesus. Have your way this morning. Hallelujah. We open up our hearts. We open up our hearts to Him. Hallelujah. Only you can minister to us, Jesus. You know our needs, Jesus. You know what we need, Jesus. Have your way today. Lift us up where we belong. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Yes, we do. You alone are worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. I said you're worthy of all the praise. Oh, oh, oh. Reign in this place. Let your spirit rain down on us. Hallelujah. Touch us, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not about us today, Jesus. It's not about how good we look today, Lord Jesus. But it's all about you, God. And we realize that we need your Holy Spirit every day, every day. We need your Holy Spirit every day. Guide us. Direct us. And have your way. Come on, open up your mouths. We're just giving you this chance right now and this opportunity right now to worship our God. Open up your mouths and make it personal. Let them know how grateful you are today. Hallelujah. Let them know how grateful you are today. Hallelujah. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. Hallelujah. Your joy, your peace. Hallelujah. Your help in the time of trouble. I said, our God, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. You're so awesome, God. You're so awesome. Awesome God, awesome God. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you. 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 We worship. We worship. We worship. We worship. We worship. We worship. We bow down before your presence. 
we bow down before your presence hallelujah you're an awesome god you are an awesome god you deserve our praises you deserve our worship we give it to you god we give it to you god yes we do yeah 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 It's the highest praise, hallelujah. It's the highest praise, hallelujah. It's the highest praise. It belongs to you, God. Yes, it does. Oh, Jesus, my sweet Savior, Jesus, the lily of the valley, Jesus. Bright and morning star, Jesus, he's worthy of all praises, hallelujah, 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 and whatever you need, God's got it, whatever you need, God's got it, his hands are open, hallelujah, and he says if you knock at the door, Hallelujah. He will open that door because he will not turn away from a broken and contrite heart, spirit. So today is your day. And knowing that God is such a big God, he's such an awesome God, that there is nothing too hard for him. All things are possible if you just believe hallelujah 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 thank you jesus thank you for being an awesome god thank you jesus he's got a blessing in store for you hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah hallelujah you are welcome in the presence of the lord hallelujah now on today we're going to go back we're going to take it back and we have a we have some songs today i'm pretty sure some of you are familiar with them but we're taking it back because it's uh, we've often heard from elder tony it's those old songs hallelujah that give you foundation it gives you something to stand on and you all know we love new songs too, but sometimes I like to go back to the old landmark. Hallelujah. Because it's something about the old landmark that gives you that spark and gives you that unction. It gives you something, gives you something that you don't normally get on a daily basis. So we want to take it back. And this little song says, there is no way. How many of you know that there is no way that you can make it without God? There is no way that you can make it without God. Hallelujah.
Now we're going to sing that again. Y'all can join in with us. There is no way. There is no way. I can make it. I can live without you. I realize that there is no way. There is no way that I can go on. I can go on. You see, sometimes the burdens they get too hard. Hey, hey. Take it up. I've tried. I have tried it over, over, and 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 over. But I found out that there is no other way. Now, I want us to give God a praise. We found out that there is no other way that we can live without the Lord. Hallelujah. Because we know that there is no failure in our God. Hallelujah. In God, there is no failure. Hallelujah. Put your hands together.
if he's never failed us, he's never forsaken us, that we can give him a great praise this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody come to have church this morning? Anybody woke up with church on their mind? Anybody come in here to give God glory? You in the right place then. They'll look at your name and say, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so glad you're here. If you can, you don't have to, but if you can. You know, you, you don't have to sit down, but if you can, you can be seated if you feel like it. But if you feel like dancing, you can keep dancing. If you feel like singing, you can keep singing. Amen, because that's just the type of people we are. We rejoice in the God who has saved us and made us and formed us and shaped us and is with us every step of the way. Welcome to First Fruits Community Church. Y'all feel the love of God in this house? I know you do. I know you do. I know you do. I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel something happening right now. I feel like you're already getting on your miracle. I feel like there's something already happening right now. You're already getting your miracle. Anybody believe that? I believe it. I believe it. I don't believe it. I know it. (laughs) Yeah, man, I know it. I know that God is the God who is a promise keeper, and he's the one that watches over us and and restores our strength when we're tired and gives us a peace that passes all understanding. And is, is, is he talking to anybody yet? I don't know. I'm just, just letting him use me. Amen. Amen. I, some, sometimes you wonder what's going on. You know, what's, what's happening? And then all of a sudden he just gives you a kind of a calm in the storm, you know, and, and you're like, why is it so calm? It should be crazy right now. But God is with us. Amen. He's not far away from us. He's right here with us. And we're so glad that he is. Can we put our hands together for the first lady of this church? Amen. Lady Ty Bellinger, we love you. My wife of almost 20 years and the the mother of this house. Amen to our entire family. Uh, We want to praise God for Sister Geneva Johnson this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. To our entire family. I'm just so thankful for them. And I'm just, uh, we are just especially grateful for the love, my God, the love that you have shown. You know, at First Fruits, we say we love God and we love people. Well, listen, we, we felt it all the way up to, you know, when my father-in-law passed away, and we felt it like times a billion when that happened because everybody in, in their own ways stepped up and blessed the Johnson family, blessed the Bellinger family, and just, oh, my gosh, we ate I don't know how many pieces of chicken this week. And I, and I can eat more, so don't get it twisted. You don't have to stop bringing it. <laughs> Man, I mean, the cake that Sister Deb cooked. That, if y'all ain't had that carrot cake, I'm so sorry you missed your blessing because you missed it. But, but you know, she could, she could bake some more of that later. You know, maybe tomorrow or something. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, man, the love, though. I mean, the love, the sincere love. Uh, from people here, people far off. Um, the homegoing service went beautiful yesterday. Those of you that were there, watched online. I mean, I mean, God just showed up and blessed the house, man. Minister we sang sovereign, and, and my God, my my wife got up and sang. He cares, and and then then to top it all off, Sister Geneva Johnson get up and sing. Believe it. I was like, how you even preach behind that? But it do make you want to preach, though. So I was like, okay, I think I got a few minutes I can holler a little bit. Oh, man, and God just came in and showed up, and he showed out, y'all. He showed, because we are tried and true. Oh, y'all ain't talking. Anybody been through something in your life, and you felt like you was going to break down? You felt like you was going to fall to pieces? All it was was a fatigue testing. God was testing you. He was, he was testing his product to make sure you could withstand. So he could show you off for his glory. The reason why you're still here is because he made you. Oh, come on. I ain't going to do that. I ain't going there. I got, I got another message to preach. I'm just giving you a little flashback, a little rewind. Because it was amazing and we are grateful. Amen. We just can't express the depth of gratitude to all of you. Uh, in your love, but I pray the Lord just pours it right back into you as much as possible, and we love you so much uh, for all of that. Uh, We're going to go into just a couple of quick announcements this morning. 
um, in the slideshow uh, here you see up here. So I wanted to put some pictures up, but I, I don't want to have to do it. So we're going to have a bunch of pictures just from the uh, memorial, from the gathering, some snapshots from phones. If anybody has any pictures uh, from anything we did this week with for Deacon Leroy Johnson, let's praise God for him and, uh, and his labor of love in the kingdom, not just here, but in the kingdom of God. If you have any pictures you took or anything like that you want to share, just send it to, to uh, admin at firstfruitscommunitychurch.com. That way uh, we could take those consolidated, and then hopefully next week we're just going to put up a little slideshow uh, for, just to reflect a little bit. Is that okay? That's okay with y'all? Awesome, awesome, awesome. I had some people send some videos out. I posted one like three-something this morning because <laughs> it was so good. I, I watched about 50 times over, so uh, it made me want to get up and shout at three in the morning in, in my um. <laughs> in my home. But uh, but yeah, God is good. So make sure you send those pictures. Uh, a couple of other quick announcements. Of course, Wednesday is back on track. We, we postponed last week, but uh, we're going to come out here Wednesday night. We have prayer at 630 at night, and then uh, we, we do Bible study at 7 p.m., and uh, we're going to talk this week about attitudes. <laughs> Because mm-hmm, last, week, last week we started talking about the fruit of the Spirit, right? Uh, but the fruit of the Spirit then births attitudes, you know? And some of, some of our attitudes aren't, don't come from the Spirit. So, you know, we're going to kind of we're gonna pl- play with that a little bit and see, see how we can work that thing out so, you know, we don't step on too many toes. But, but, but really, you know, something should change when you have the Holy Ghost, you know? Something should change, you know? Sooner or later, a fruit is going to be born, the fruit of the Spirit. And based off of that, our attitudes shift and change too, right? So we're going to talk about all that. If you want to come on out, come on out. Please come on out. Don't forget we are, we're going to fast from 6 until 6 on Wednesday. Uh, so make sure you come along with us on that fast, and uh, we'll be grateful. I also want to just say I am super excited because my dad is here, and my mom is here, and, and Kenny Bellinger, Randy Bellinger, all the way from upstate New York. Oh, man, y'all. I'm really trying to contain myself. Because they have to get out of here at a certain time. We got that all covered. We got your uh, limo a- escort and all that stuff to get you. Now. In my mind, we do. But we do have somebody that's going to, you know, he's got a pretty nice vehicle. We got all that covered. We got you covered. You, you won't miss your flight. Maybe. I don't know. We might purposely, and I'll call your job and be like, she can't come. And don't worry about it. As a matter of fact, we're going to retire them. I, you know, we won the lottery. No, I'm just kidding. We don't play the lot. We, uh, we'll figure it out. We'll build them a house down here, and they can just stay here. The, the reason, so y'all may, can I, can I take a moment, please, just real quick? I just want to share some, some awesome things about my dad and my mom. So when we first started this church, right, we've had conversations before about, like, feeding people, feeding the homeless, feeding people. And so, like, I was in the midst of getting the church rolling. My dad was like, hey, did you start that food bank yet? And I was like, no, I haven't yet. <laughs> He's like, you got to do, you got to feed people because you can't just be a church that's sitting around. You can't be a church that's actually doing something. Now, he was just going, going, going. So the reason, honestly, the reason why we really kicked off the Somerville Food Bank was because of my dad, man. God used my dad to say, hey, don't forget what I put in your heart many years ago. Amen. And um, another thing is, now, don't judge the organ, okay? Don't judge the, we judge people. Don't judge the organ either. That organ used to go on tour with Black Sabbath and all these rock groups all over the United States. And my dad was connected in the music industry. He's been playing all his life, all his life. He's got pictures, them, you know, them old black and white pictures when they didn't have color. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, you know, holding this guitar, you know, 11 years old. But he's rock and rolled all his life, you know. And, uh, and, uh, but he was connected with someone who, who uh, said, hey, I got this B3 and the Leslie and man in, in the garage and long story short man we got it and he threw it they, he threw it on they threw it on u-haul drove all the way down from drove all the way down from upstate new york with that organ where there, there used to be cocaine on top of this i'm sure come on let's be real in rock concerts they not up there you, you know what i'm saying so they probably you know, this all i don't know what else gonna happen up here but but god has sanctified the organ got saved <laughs> <laughs> you can hear it. See, like, yeah, 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 yeah. As a matter of fact, you're going to hear a little bit more of that because my dad is going to play for us this morning. Just a little bit. Of, in a few minutes after we do offering and stuff, I'm just going to have him come up and play a little piece of Amazing Grace. I figure that's something we all know, right? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I'm going to be preaching on that a little bit, you know? So, so, but we're going to let him get on there in his own way and just, just bless the house, man. How could I not? Have my dad get on there and wail 
That's what we say. We say, well, you know, <laughs> even if it's a song like Amazing Grace, oh, man, it's just a blessing, man. It's a blessing. So, so um, yeah, and, and Randy, I just love you so much. I just gave us 50,000 hugs. I'm going to give you another one right now. Yeah. Love you. Love yeah. you. Love you. Love you. Absolutely. Just getting down here and, and just, just being a blessing to us and, and always loving up on the, the grands and, and us and constantly just this it's a blessing man and, and we are so grateful i really wish i could just hit the pause button and really keep y'all here but you know i know how to pray who knows what'll happen bring it pretty, pretty soon all my all my family will be filled up in this church from upstate new york and we're gonna have a a new hampshire new york type of praise soon i don't know but um god is good god is good so all right so and i also want to say a shout out to my mom up in uh New York. She couldn't get down here. I was like, hey, look, we'll figure it out. We'll fly you. But she just couldn't, couldn't get down here. So Sandy, she's, she's watching. That's my mom's name. Can we put our hands together for her watching online? I talked to her for about an hour yesterday. Oh, man. Is she doing her mama thing like, like mamas do and just encouraging me and checking me, making sure I'm on point? You know, I get a little off. You know, come on now. Everybody gets a little off kilter. She's like, all right. You got to do da 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 I'm like, yes, yes. Jesus, okay, <laughs> but she gave me good talking yesterday, and so it's a blessing. Brittany, it's good to see you too. Brittany, oh man, I'm telling everybody's business, but you know, preachers do that sometimes, but it's a good thing. So can we, first of all, let's put our hands together for Brittany. That's my mother-in-law's goddaughter, amen, really her daughter. Um, Brittany flew all the way down from Maryland area, D.C. area, but she was in my wife and I's wedding as, was it, was it the bubble blower or the fly? Yeah, the bubble blower, you know when the little girls are now, <laughs> bubble Flower girl, okay. I don't know. I can't remember, man. See, I'm, I, you know, but but she was she was the flower girl. They had bubbles. I thought, yeah, but she was throwing the flowers and I'm like nine years old now. She all grown up, got her own business, man, doing the thing. God blessing her. Thank God for you and your mama. And and when she came down here, like I really didn't want to work nobody, but she stepped right in and she took my dad and my mom everywhere they needed to go. She made sure. Everything was in place. She, I mean, I was like, good Lord, if I had, I would just, I'd just give you our expedition because she drove that thing, and uh, she, I, we thank God for that. So we love you so much. I'm so glad you're here this morning. All right, I'm going to stop talking because I go down the line, and I, I can go down the line. Let me do this real quick. Anybody's first time here this morning, just wave your hand. Just wave your hand. We don't make you stand up and do nothing like that. Awesome. I'm so glad you came here, chose this house to hang out and receive God's word for your life, and, and I believe God has positioned you at the right time so you can receive what he has for you. So we welcome you. We welcome you. All right, so I probably have 50 other announcements, but we're going to move right on because I want to get my dad on that organ. But before we do that, I want to go ahead and lift up our offering. So the way we do the offering here is really super easy. You're going to see uh, on the next screen, you can text FFCC on your phone to that phone number. You'll get a link, and you can give that way your tithes and your offerings. Or there's probably some yellow envelopes in front of you in your chairs. You can also write that check, that million-dollar check. I just want to thank you so much. Y'all laughing. I'm serious. One day I'm going to say it and it's going to happen. Okay, now I'm going to take that million and I'm going to go where we going. Look at your neighbor and say, next, Tim. <laughs> What's next? Next, Tim. We're going to go get that land. We're going to build that house. But until then, you know, I'm just kidding. Whatever you give, you know, you just give what? Cheerfully, right? Right? Nobody likes to give grudgingly or because they feel it's a religious ceremony and Oh, you know how it is. I ain't got to testify about it. We give liberally. We give cheerfully. We give freely. Not even really expecting anything from God because he's already, has he already done enough? Okay, okay. So, so if he's already done enough, if he never does anything else ever again, he's still worthy of all that we can give back unto him and to the work of the ministry. And so with all hearts and minds on the same page, stand up. Uh, at this time, as we prepare to give the offering, you can lift up the, the offering in the, in the air on your phone, uh, and, or, or you can lift up that, that envelope that you have in your hand, or you may be uh, filling it out, so don't worry about that, but you can still stand up as we prepare to give. I believe the Bible says that he gives seed to the sowers. All right, so the seed this morning is your finances, and you're sowing into not my work, into his work. Okay, and you can be guaranteed if you let that seed go and you help us out, that God is going to in turn do the same thing for you. Amen? Y'all believers of that? And watch this. There's times I didn't even have to give. I remember sitting in services like crying. I didn't have no money. I didn't, I didn't have anything. But I would stand up and I'd give them, I would give them praise. I, you know, we used to walk up and give the offering, you know. I would walk up to the plate and act like I was putting something in. 
and praise God because I knew one day I'd be able to. And so even if you don't have to give, don't worry about that. Don't let that burden you. Don't, make that, don't think that if you give this morning, am I going to be able to pay my bills? Listen, God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches. Now, his riches are immeasurable. So don't worry about your needs. He's got you. And he's also got your desires. Okay? So with your seed in your hand, Father, we thank you this morning for the seed sown, for the sowers, Lord, for those that just give cheerfully. We ask that you would take this offering, Lord, and multiply it, Lord God, so that we could continue to do the work and the will that you, that you have placed in our heart to do here in this ministry, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord, for each and every soul here, both here and online that are giving this morning. In Jesus' name, let the church shout amen. Amen. You can be seated. You can be seated. You can be seated. This man with a flowery shirt on, my dad that gave birth to me. I look like him. You know, I'm starting to get that, you know, that receding stuff going on. And I am proud of that. I'm super excited about that. We are going to ask uh, dad, come on up to the organ. Uh, and you can kick whatever key you kick it off in. We're going to follow behind the amazing grace. Everybody knows that song. If you don't, you can lip sync like I do when I don't know. But, um, but I think he's going to play in key of C, so he's got us. Can we put our hands together for Kenny Bellinger? Amen. Amen. He's going to wind that baby up. Oh, trust me, he didn't play in the organ before. He played about 50 times before he even brought it down. He almost didn't let us have it. He kind of wants it back, but we ain't giving it to him. <laughs> oh, Lord. Y'all sing with me. Gray. I can't sing, baby. You better get that mic. Come on and praise him. 
<laughs> Woo! Can we put our hands together for the Lord and for my dad? Amen. Anybody know what that grace this morning? Anybody know what that grace is about this morning? Hallelujah. Beautiful. Oh, man, that was beautiful. Let us pray. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for the amazing grace that you've given us. Your grace is sufficient. Your grace is a one-way love. And we just thank you this morning for it. As we prepare to expound upon your word just for a moment in time, we ask that you would embed this word into the hearts of your people. Let us receive it with open hearts and open minds that we might grow thereby and be blessed and ministered to in Jesus' name. Let the church shout amen. Amen, amen. amen. I want to take you to a uh, passage of scripture here that's going to come up on the screen out of the Gospel of John, chapter 1. Uh, it's chapter 1, verses 14 through 18. Uh, you see it there. So when you see that, you, if you don't mind, we're exercising church a little bit. We like to stand up and sit down, stand up, sit down. If you can, you don't have to, but you please stand up at the reverence of the Word of God as we read it uh, into your hearing. The Bible says, and the Word was made flesh. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace. Full, somebody say grace. grace. Full of grace and truth. The next scripture tells us, John bore witness of him and cried, saying, this was he of whom I've been preaching all about. I spoke of him. He that cometh after me is preferred before me. Why? Because he was before me. The next verse tells us this, and of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law, no, that's totally different than grace. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by who? Jesus Christ. And the last verse says, no man hath seen God at any time. Now, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. I just want to ask you a question as you're seated this morning. As a matter of fact, you can ask the person next to you, what is your story? Yeah, 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 yeah. What, 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 what is your story? Uh, I felt like you felt that. You could be seated. Yeah, yeah, you could stand. doesn't matter. What is your story? What is our story? story. You know, you hear the word grace a lot if you're in the church world and stuff, and you may even hear it outside the church because grace is not just a church-confined word. Grace has been around forever, all right? So I want to talk to you a little bit about grace, but I want, I want you to understand something. Grace is more than a definition. Does that make sense? Like, grace is more than an explanation. Now, I could go through 50,000 scriptures and try to define grace for you, it's God's unmerited favor, or this and this and this and that. Um, but, but to me, grace, if you really want to understand what grace is, you need an experience. You need an experience. In other words, I'm saying you need a story. <laughs> because grace is something that is taught to us through stories. It's taught to us through experiences and and, and, and all through these holy scriptures, grace is really conveyed to us story after story after story after story. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you take the time and you read through the Gospels, uh, Jesus, watch this, Jesus never used the word grace. Paul used it about a hundred times. But Jesus, if you read through, you know, you got one of the Bibles that got the red letters and all that. That means Jesus, that's what Jesus was saying. You read through all those red letters, you will, not, you will not see the word grace. Interesting. Why? Because he taught us about grace as he lived it. Oh, come on. We got church, man. Y'all, yo, we about to go to church. Jesus, the Bible says, was full of grace. Full of grace. Jesus is full of grace and truth. And so it just literally spilled out of him. 
amen, out of him everywhere he went, everywhere he walked, everywhere he was, everybody around him experienced what? Grace. Yeah, that's why that songwriter wrote the song Amazing Grace, because he had a story. Y'all know the story of the songwriter that wrote that song? He was a slave trader. Bringing, bringing slaves from Africa over to America and something happened and God gave him a transformative experience to where he turned and he repented of his sins and he wrote the song Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch. He knew the wretchedness of what he was doing but even in the, oh come on, even in the midst of his wretchedness God brought his saving grace to him. And that is amazing. It is amazing. And there's something about when we read all these stories in the gospel and, and we start to hear and feel the grace being conveyed to us that we actually start to long to be in that setting. We're, 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 not, we're not just reading it, but we're now, we want to be in the story. Why? Because the grace is being conveyed and we want some of that grace. Anybody need some grace this morning? Oh, well, look at your neighbor and say, what is your story? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, 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 so you, 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 have G, you have Jesus in the beginning of his ministry, right up front, calling disciples to do what? To follow him. Amen? All right. Where are my disciples at this morning? Jesus, Jesus calls his disciples. And, and, you know, this was a normal practice of the rabbis. Uh, you know, you know in, in, in our modern day terms, I would say, like, say it like this, that, that, that these people desiring to be disciples of a rabbi would go through an application process and they would submit their applications and the best would be picked out of the application crew. The brightest would be picked out to be the disciples. The, the best uh, who were at the top echelon of all those applications, the rabbis would pick to be the disciples. And, and so, you know, if their credit was approved... And, and, and if the reference is checked out okay, they could be the disciples. <laughs> but watch this. Here's the difference between them and Jesus, between those rabbis and Jesus. They accept, those rabbis accepted the applications. Jesus offered invitations. Oh, y'all, come on up. I feel something up in here. Jesus offered an invitation. And, and it wasn't to the best of the best. It was to the folk that'd be like, mm, why did he get an invitation and not me? I got, a, I got a PhD. He got a GED. God don't care about an elemental piece. He offers invitations. He invited people that would be or that would have never made the cuts. If they had to go through that process, that application process. So he, he, he found a few fishermen. <laughs> he found some folk out there laboring and catching fish and said, come and follow me. And then he said, he said let me go to this, this man named Matthew's house. Yeah, this tax collector, Jewish tax collector working for our enemies. This old, this old traitor working for Rome who everybody hated. Tax collectors were below prostitutes. It was that crazy. They hated tax collectors. But Jesus goes to Matthew, the tax collector. Does not say apply, because he would all, you know, sometimes you apply, and you, they, they send you an immediate no. <laughs> he would have got that immediate no. But Jesus says, come follow me. Oh, y'all feel that? I feel, I feel some grace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so really what I'm saying this morning is it does not matter what your story is. Come on. No matter who you are, no matter what you have done, no matter what you have thought about, grace has not given up on you. Mm -hmm. Grace can still rewrite your story. So I want you to look at your neighbor dead in their pupils. That's how we say it down south, dead in their pupils. Dead in their pupils and ask them, what is your story? What is your story? What is, what is your story? I'm going to get in trouble because she's an English teacher. I saw her looking at me. We don't say, what is their story? I'm sorry. <laughs> I felt that. I know. What, what 
what is your story? What is your story? What is the story? I want to talk to you real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick about one of my favorite stories, Jesus and the leper. Right. Yeah, Jesus and the leper. You know, fast forward to 20, 2019 or whatever, um, you know, Jesus and the COVID-19 patient. I mean, I know you can, however you want to frame it in your view, go ahead and frame it. But this, I want to talk to you about Jesus and the leper, right? right? Because a leper, if you were diagnosed with leprosy, what happened? You could never be touched again. You can never be touched again. No, no handshakes. No embrace. No hugs. Going through pain, crying. Nobody to wipe the tears from your eyes. Come on, come on. Put yourself. You ever, you ever been in a alone place? You ever feel like you ain't have nobody there for you? That was real for lepers. People who had leprosy. But what I thought was interesting, I believe it is in the Gospel of Luke. Let me double check because I don't like to give you something. And I want to make sure it's there. I know it's there. I just want to read it to you, really. And, and it says, and watch this, verse 13, Luke 5 and 13 says, and he put forth his hand and touched him. Wow. Let me say it one more time. You didn't catch that. A man with leprosy, okay, which, which was, it, wasn't, it was like contagious. So if I touch you, I'm walking away with leprosy. That's how bad it was. They had lep leper colonies. Okay? The Bible tells us that he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately, and immediately the lepers departed from him. Okay? So, so listen, he didn't have to do that. Right? He didn't have to do that. He could have stayed at a safe distance with his mask on. And, and, and then healed them and then touched them. Oh, y'all follow me, right? Uh, uh, yeah, he could have healed them and touched them. But see, we see grace conveyed here because, because what happens is, see, miracle reveals the power of God, but touch reveals his grace. Oh, hallelujah. I know we cry, we need power, but we need some touch. Because when you're touched by God, there's a grace that comes. God touches you before you think you can fix your life all up. Miracle reveals the power of God. A touch reveals his grace. So Jesus, Jesus literally touched him before he gave him the miracle. He gave him grace before the miracle happened. He didn't say, you got to get your life together. You got to go do this, do that. Then I'll touch you. See, that's the God who loves us. He teaches us right here a lot about this. And I want to bring it to, to all of you listening here and online. You know, a lot of us have these thoughts, like I hear a lot of this as a pastor, like, oh, you know, I'm going to come back to church, but I kind of, I got to get control of my life. I'm going to come back to church, but I got to overcome my addictions. Oh, come on up in this house. I, 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 I'm coming back, Pastor, but I just got to kind of clean up my life first. I didn't did, I didn't weigh too much. I just did some stuff that I shouldn't have done even after I got saved. Da, 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 da. That's not what grace does. That's not what grace... Grace touches you and then heals you. Like we say, what? Come as you are. Bam. Come as you are. You won't leave the same way you came, but come as you are. You ain't got to make your life look pretty. God ain't come to make uh, bad people good anyways. He came to make dead people live. Another example here is in the Gospel of John chapter 8, and I'm almost done. Uh, Jesus Christ is spending some time teaching his disciples, right? Articulating the, the principles of the kingdom. And all of a sudden, the religious leaders... Come walking into the courtyard with a woman in probably the bed sheets and all and throws her in the courtyard because they caught her in the act of adultery. We got her. We saw it. She was doing what she should have been doing. Bring her to the courtyard because the law says that if you catch a woman in adultery, they had stones in their hands to stone her. Jesus teaching, the rabbis come up with this woman ready to stone her. He's looking at them. And Jesus, watch this. Jesus, what does Jesus do? Jesus literally looks up at them. 
And Jesus tells them, any of you, look at somebody say, any. Any, any of you that, 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 that is without, out of all y'all people here that just threw this lady on the ground because you caught her in the midst of adultery. Okay, all of you holding those rocks, all of, you, know, you know how people do when they see you mess up and they want to grab a rock. And they may not be a rock, but they got words that come out that are as heavy as rocks because you messed up, you did something wrong, whatever it may be, and they want to cast those stones. Jesus said, "All oh, any of you that are without sin, go ahead, cast the first stone. Look back down to the ground. Boom. Dust. Boom. They dropping the stones. Which I thought was kind of interesting because I was thinking like somehow they knew that he knew they was. They may not have been doing what she was doing or maybe they just didn't get caught. But somewhere they knew Jesus knew that they was not all together. So they all dropped the stones and walked away. Jesus looks up at the woman, right? And he says to her, neither do I condemn you. Neither do I condemn you. Go and quit living that lifestyle. Go and sin no more. Something about that story conveys to us more than a definition I could give you about what grace is. More than an explanation I could give to you just what grace really is this morning. Look, please look at your neighbor. Yes, we're doing the look at your neighbor type of thing because y'all took her back to the old landmark. Look at your neighbor and say, what is your story? What, what, what is your story? What, what is your story? What, what, what is your backdrop? What is your situation? What, what is your issue? What is your, what is your problem? What is your story? On the cross, the soldiers had nailed Jesus through the wood that they lifted him up into the air with. The blood was pouring out of his veins. His body had already been beaten. Uh, 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 blood just pouring out of him. As he's, he's feeling the virtue leave his body. The Roman soldiers lift him up on the cross, on that, that tree that they nailed him to. And, and as he's hanging there and beginning to asphyxiate and beginning to lose his breath and, and his natural body pushing himself up to live a little bit longer, Amen. Jesus looks down and says something. He says this, Father, and all of heaven, all of heaven bowing, bowing down, looking at Jesus on the cross. Angels ready to let, let, say the word, Jesus, and we're going to come down and, and, and take care of you. Everybody waiting to hear what he says. Jesus, blood gurgling, trying to breathe, says, Father. Forgive them. Father, forgive them. Because forgiveness, watch this, hear this, open up. Forgiveness is the fruit of grace. Forgiveness is the fruit of grace. When you get God's grace and you know what you've been forgiven of, Forgiveness is a fruit of grace. So I wanted to say this as we wrap up. I've heard three things that I wrote down here that I hear people say sometimes. This might be you, may not. May have been you, I don't know. But I've heard people say, well, grace, not after what I've done. Anybody ever said that before? I'm raising my hand. I'm going to say that a few times. Not after what I've done. I'm not even talking about before I got saved. God's a keeper, but, I, you know. Mm. I was talking to my mom about that yesterday. Grace. Not, not after what I've done. You know, it's easy to look back. The accuser of the brethren, that old devil, wants you to look back at your mistakes and think about what you've done to disgrace God. To move you from a place of seeing God as a loving God to a judgmental God who wants to condemn you. But the, our Bible says that he did not come to the world to condemn the world. But, but that the world through him might be saved. 
So if you ever think about anything that you've ever done and you have a feeling like, mm, how can I get receive the grace of God after what I've done? I came here to tell you your story is designed for his grace to be revealed in your life. Even your mess ups. Mm -hmm. I've also heard people say, uh, no, not 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 after what has been done to me. Not, not after what has been done to me. Grace. Think about that. We all have had things done to us. It's one thing to think about what we've done, but it's another thing then to think about what somebody else may have done to us. And think, can God's grace infiltrate this situation, this, this story of trauma, this, this story of pain, this story of a hurt, this affliction, this tribulation, however you want to frame it up and describe it. Can God's grace come into my situation that has been done to me? God wants you to know it's been there the whole time. We live in a fallen world. Doesn't matter who we are, things happen to everybody. What was done to you was not designed. Well, it was designed by the enemy to destroy you. But God says he works all things together for the good. He, he takes your trauma. He takes your anxiety. He takes your worries. He takes the fret. He takes the pain. He takes your tear. He, he takes all of that and the good stuff and mixes it up in a bowl called grace. It's a, uh, it's Deb, it's a grace cake. It's a grace cake. He, he bakes a grace cake. He mixes it up. But, but you got to put your faith in it too. Don't, you, you can't, can you miss an ingredient in a cake and it be good? No, you got, see, see, God has his ingredients, but the only, the only, the only ingredient he requires for you to put into the batch that he's mixing up is faith. So that no matter what has happened to you, if you believe God, then you know his grace is sufficient. No matter what has been done to you. Anybody making a whole lot of choices in your life? <laughs> choice after choice after choice after choice after choice after choice. And you're saying, well, not after what my, my life has become. The disappointments. It wasn't even the devil. <laughs> You know, the devil was sitting across the street from the church one day. And they over there testifying, oh, the devil this, the devil that. And the devil was crying. And so this man walked up and said, devil, why are you crying? And he said, they're over there lying on me. Everything wasn't the devil. A lot of what has become in our lives was just from a bunch of choices we've made. And so sometimes people will get to a place, I don't know if it's you, maybe I'm just preaching to myself, but you'll get to a place where like, you know, after all that I've become, God's grace, I would venture to say this, that he allowed all of that to take place and come to pass so he could really show you that no matter what you think your life has become, I don't even see you that way. I'm not looking through a lens of sin and shame. I'm not looking through a lens of judgment and condemnation. Yeah, yeah, sin is a, is a trespass. It's, 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 I'm not pleased with your sins, but, but where sin abounds, oh my God, I feel like preaching. Where sin resides, where sin and bad choices are happening, the Bible says, not me, the Bible says that grace much more abounds. There's more grace from what has happened in your life and what has become of your life. And all you got to do this morning is receive the faith, the spirit of faith to believe that God has grace that can overcome all of your situations, all of your struggles, all of your, your things that are going on in your life. And you know why? Because the grace of God is an unconditional grace. That is just not experienced through a definition explained, but through your story. Anybody got a story this morning? I remember robbing people at gunpoint. 
I remember chasing a man down the street trying to beat him up, and he threw his tambourine at me. It was, uh, it was a young man on the choir at the church I got saved at <laughs> later on down the line. It was all the choices I made that caused me to face 77 years in prison. It was whatever that happened to me that had brought a tumor into my head the size of a grapefruit. I didn't even know God, but his grace was there. I made so many choices. I mean, I go down the line smoking weed. I know y'all don't talk about your choices, but pastors always have to talk about it. But y'all don't talk about it. Some of y'all, we got to go back to testimony service. Let's y'all talk about some of your stuff sometimes. So I can memorize your testimony and share it with others. But, but you know, I used to smoke so much weed and drink so much liquor and do all the stuff that I did. But look what God, you could have never told me these two feet would be planted here today, preaching unto you something called the gospel of grace. But God, hallelujah, I wish I had that. Oh, God. But God, who's rich in mercy, with the everlasting love he is, as it is. Look down through the annals of time and already knew that I was going to make those choices and still said I got grace for you. He, listen, he didn't, nothing surprised him when you made that choice. Nothing surprised him. Nothing surprises God. He knows the end from the beginning. But look at the grace. Even though he knew, the Bible says, even while you were yet sinners, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. He knew who we were, who we had become. But in spite of God, loved us enough. And not just loved us, but loves us enough. Everybody stand on your feet. He loves you this morning enough. He loves you enough that you can look at, you can do a couple things. You can look at your stories in your life. And you can celebrate where he brought you from. You can start to think back and get yourself out of that pity party. Out of that depression. A lot of depression is caused from our thoughts, which is caused from, 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 from the oppression of the enemy to get us into a dark pit to make us think that God is not a God of grace. God, listen. God, I'm going to say it, don't even really care about what you did. Because listen, listen here. I should have been dead and in the grave and in hell. It's appointed for, I said that yesterday, for a man wants to die and then comes to judgment. But listen, but listen, my judgment took place at the cross. He took my sins, nailed them to the cross, took your sins and everything any, any of us and everybody that has ever been born has ever done. He didn't say, I'm judging you for it. I'm putting that judgment on my son. Now, if that ain't grace, because I don't know nobody in here, including myself, to put my son up and say, put, up, put, up, put all your judgment on my son. Kill him. That's what he did. That's what he did. He did it. So we can listen. So we don't have to go through religious ceremonies. So we don't have to meet all these requirements that the law tells us to meet. Because we couldn't meet him if we tried. Nobody taught me to cuss. I just started cussing. Nobody taught me to lie. I just started lying. <laughs> it was in me. But Jesus died for us because he knew we couldn't be holy. He, we couldn't come to that place where he wanted us to be in right relationship with him. But he made the way. He is the door. He says, I am. I am the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. He that believeth in me won't ever perish. So with bowed heads this morning, Father, I thank you this morning for the grace that is sufficient. This love, this love, this love, Father, this love, this love that you've given us, we appreciate. Lord, you know our story. We know our stories. And we see, we see you in it now like never before. Father, we now receive what we call hope this morning. 
Because where there's grace and where there's love and where there's faith, there's hope. There's hope that does not make a shame because your love now is in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Father, if there's anybody in here that's in a place where they feel like they've done too much or too much has happened to them or their life has just become a wreck and just looks insane and crazy right now, how could you even come into the situation? They've, they've rejected you all these years and they just, well, if there's anybody under the sound of my voice or online that feels that way, Lord, I'm asking you to, to just pour out your grace into them give them the ability to put their faith in you lord god and show them that forgiveness is that fruit of grace father forgive their sins wash them clean hallelujah with the blood of your son son jesus christ and with this word that has been given to them today if there's someone in here that feels like their life has become too much lord i ask that you prick their hearts and that they come running up front that i could just pray with them and touch them before you heal them hallelujah to show them how much you love them we thank you this morning we bless your holy name in jesus name amen amen come on let's put our hands together what is your story think about it this week think about it this afternoon if there's anybody in the house that wants to make you need a church home you need a church home you do need a home that you can call the place where god feeds your soul then i want you to come up front and we'll bring you in you'll be a a member will we'll disciple you and we'll, we'll, we'll love up on you and do what we got to do to help you have that relationship with God like it's supposed to. Is, is there any this morning? Is there any? Or maybe you're saying, you know what? I, I believe I want to be born again. You know, you, maybe you want to be baptized in Jesus' name. You can come up front and I'll baptize you this morning right now after service. We got clothes you can change it. You can be baptized. Anybody that wants to be saved, come on up. We'll welcome you into the house of God. We can't even get to heaven now unless we're born again. The beauty of it is not hard. All we do is repent. Be born of water and spirit. In other words, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. And God brings us into the family. If there's anybody that just wants prayer, let's we'll do this real quick. But you can come up. I want to touch and agree with you. And I want to pray for you that God gives you what you need. That he works it out in your life. That he heals your body. That he gives you peace in the midst of the storm. If there's anybody that needs prayer this morning. If you don't need prayer, that's okay. But if you want it, you can come up front and I will pray for you. Little Charles, you coming for prayer? Come on, son. I tell you, this boy always want prayer. And I see the grace of God on him. And I know God going to bless you, young man. Lift up your hands. Little Charles Jr., Lord our God, Jesus, Jesus brought the little kids, put them on their knees and said, allow them and do not forbid them because such is the kingdom of heaven. Heaven is like these little kids. You know, Father, we thank you. We thank you for, for him and his purpose you've given him. And we just bless him right now with your grace and your truth in Jesus name. Amen. I love you, son. Oh, Ariel, I love you, baby. Good to see you. Good to see you. Lift up them hands like this. Yeah. And say, I receive it. Amen. Father, I pray for her now that the spirit of grace enter into her heart and mind and soul. Lord, that you begin to do what you do best, Father. Draw her with your loving kindness close to thee. Lord God, to do with her what your will has established from the beginning. Lord God, save her, sanctify her, and use her for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my daughter, my daughter, my daughter. Your smile makes me happy. Your, your eyes are so beautiful. You know that? You know God has made you a beautiful young lady. And I thank God for your testimony and your story, young lady. Father, I thank you for keeping her and giving her the grace she needs. Lord, even when she got baptized a few weeks back in your name, hallelujah. And you said he that has started a good work will, will finish it, Lord God. We ask that you fill her with the Holy Ghost, Lord God, and let your glory appear to her. Lord, begin to give her dreams and visions and insight and discernment, Lord. And Lord, give her the ability to encourage others around her that may not be encouraged. Hallelujah, Lord. Give her, hallelujah, all of the love that she can hold within her heart to give to others, Lord. And we'll forever praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.